Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to talk about splits. So if you've ever watched the Race to World first, uh, you may have heard them talk about mythic splits, heroic splits, um, class stacking, armor stacking, that, that type of thing. And I wanted to go through and make a video that uh, talks about why guilds do those things and what they are, right? So uh, what I've got right here is basically a list of 24 players that could potentially be in one of those guilds that, that is going to be doing this kind of thing. And then I've got each player has four different classes that, that they could potentially play, right? So this is something that you would expect to see in, in one of those top end guilds. They play many classes. And the idea behind that is that uh, the more characters you have to choose from, the more fit you can make your team composition for a specific encounter, right? So if you have a boss like uh, Sylvanas, that's a super tight DPS check and it's it's really hard to kill, um, you're going to want to bring the classes that do the utmost damage and you're going to want to bring classes that have utility that fits really well with, uh, with certain moments in the fight or you're going to want to bring classes that their CDs line up really easily with the natural uh, timings of the fight, that kind of thing. So you're going to want to have as many characters to choose from as possible. So I basically, I went through and did basically what my guild has us do, which is I gave every player four characters. Uh, some people have more, some people have uh, just four. Uh, you, we don't go below four, so you have at least four characters. Some people have up to like six or seven or, or who knows how many. And then I just went through and I listed all the classes and I gave each player four different classes that they could potentially play, right? And I tried to keep them... Uh, I, I didn't think too much about uh, strategically, like, oh, this guy plays a Warlock, so he's going to have a Warlock Mirror main, and he's going to play a Priest and a Mage as well, because those are all Cloth Casters. I didn't really think about that too much. The only thing I did think about is if I was going to put two of the same class in one player's uh, row, I was going to just have it be their second character, because at least in my guild, and as far as I can imagine, uh, I don't know why you would have a second, like a, a me for example, I play two priests. I don't know why you would have a second priest be your fourth character instead of being your, your main alt, right? So uh, there are some, like these three guys right here, if they play two of the same class, it's going to be their second character. So uh, other than that, I didn't really think too much about this. I just kind of went through and I was like, yeah, I can imagine a warrior main playing a demon hunter as his, as his alt maybe having a mage as their third character and then maybe playing a rogue as their fourth character that kind of thing so i just went through and filled all that out okay so you have this group of players and all these characters to choose from and uh now you have the problem of figuring out the best way to gear them um and because you want as many of them as possible to be as strong as possible uh, in case they're needed on a certain boss in progression, right? And that's the main purpose of splits in general, but mostly heroic splits. Um, so during progression, uh, heroic splits are a really big deal, and then during farm, mythic splits are going to become a big deal. So let's start with heroic splits uh, in the Race to World first in particular. So if we go over here, I just made this real quick. Basically, what we've got here is... Uh, four different splits. So if you see split one, leather. Next, we've got a, a plate split. Then we have a cloth split. And then we have a male split. Oh, right here at the end. So basically, uh, I went through and I, I grabbed pretty much everybody's leather character, threw it in split one, grabbed all their plate characters, threw them in split two, their cloth characters, put them in split three. Same with male. However, when it comes to splits... Uh, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. So, for instance, maybe Healer 4 doesn't have a leather character, right? In that case, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna put uh, their priest here, or are you just gonna leave the slot open? And then the other thing you have to keep in mind is uh, every raid is significantly stronger if they bring specific classes. So, for instance. Um, warriors, priests, and mages all have a raid buff, right? Uh, intellect, fortitude, and, and battle shout uh, that just make you 5% or 10% or whatever the number is 
stronger in a specific thing, right? So if you can manage it, you would like to bring at least one mage to every split. That's why this mage is down here. At least one priest to every split. That's why this healer is a priest. Um, and at least one warrior to every split. That's why this, this DPS is a warrior, right? So you want those three raid buffs. And then some other quality of life things, and potentially not just quality of life, um, there are certain bosses that you are going to have a really, really hard time killing without a Warlock, for example. So maybe like Sylvanas on Heroic, if you don't have a Warlock, especially during the Race to World First, before they nerfed the, the Veils, if you don't have a Warlock, then during those intermission phases where you're burning the boss and she casts those Veils on the bridge, uh, you're going to have a really hard time running out of those. So you, you kind of need to bring a Warlock, and Warlocks bring more than just uh, the the lock gates, they bring closets to summon people in case you're swapping people in and out. And they bring uh, health stones, which are pretty much irreplaceable. So you want to have a warlock in every single split if you can manage it as well. So you got mage, warrior, uh, priest, and warlock. And then you're going to want to bring the two damage buffs. So in a split like this, a leather split, that's going to be really easy. Monk and Demon Hunter wear leather, so you're going to have plenty of them in this split. But in other splits, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you can get a Monk and a Demon Hunter in as many of them as possible, right? So for this leather split, we've covered all of the, the raid buffs, the damage buffs, all of that stuff. And then we filled out the rest with uh, druids, rogues, anything that wears leather, right? Um, and the idea behind this split is that all of the gear that drops, well, not all of it, because mages or warlocks or warriors could get gear that isn't tradable to other leather people. But the idea is you bring as many people who wear leather to the same boss kills so that a ton of leather pieces will drop. And then once you get all those leather pieces, you can either trade them between characters to try and buff, uh, to fill in slots for characters that don't have uh, higher item level leather pieces, right? Or you can just leave them on the characters that loot them uh, to allow for trading in the future, right? If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna trade them immediately. So you, this is the leather split, and then if we go down here, this is a plate split. Uh, these are just, again, I didn't go through and think like too strongly, aside from you know making sure raid buffs are covered, and then I just kind of filled it out from there. Um, so this is what a plate split might look like. You're gonna have a lot of warriors, paladins, death knights, that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, I, I filled out the rest. This one's got a mage. A lot of the ranged classes need to come, or can come to this. You don't specifically have to have uh, every single person in every single split, right? Because um, that's time that they could be doing other stuff, right? So this priest, for example, we already have a priest in this group. This priest may or may not need to kill all these heroic bosses, especially outside of a cloth stack. Um, so maybe this priest, instead of being in this group, oh, this is an 8 instead of a 0. Maybe this priest, instead of being in this group, could be spending that time doing Mythic Plus or spending that time doing PvP, that kind of thing. So uh, you're not always going to have every single player in every single split. That just is probably not the most efficient use of time. And what you could even do is if you have enough cloth or enough plate or enough leather characters... What you could potentially do is only put in enough to kill all eight bosses for this one plate split and then create another plate split with all the other plate characters that weren't in this one that could also kill eight bosses, right? Because then the people who were supposed to be in this split could be doing other stuff while this split is running. And then when their split comes around, they could go in and uh, uh, play their plate characters for that split, right? So for plate splits, again, you're going to have... Warriors, Paladins, Death Knights, everybody that wears plate. And then I filled out the rest with, we need to make sure we have a Warlock. We need to make sure we have a Priest, a Mage, um, a Monk, and a Demon Hunter um, for the, the magic buff and the damage buff. I mean, the, the uh, physical debuff. You'll notice there's no Druids in here. There's no reason to have a Druid in a, a plate split aside from uh, like mechanics that require Druids in, the, in boss fights. Uh, like having a roar is really nice. Druids do bring things that would be helpful. It's just they're not strictly necessary. And then next we've got this cloth split. This is just another example. Uh, it's going to be a ton of warlocks, priests, mages, 
Um, this guy's on his rogue just because he doesn't have a cloth character and his other characters are in the other splits. So this is another example of somebody who could potentially not come to this split. You could take this rogue character out of it and have this person go do PvP or do Mythic Plus instead of doing this split. I just have them in here because it's their, their fourth character, right? Um, and then finally, for the fourth split, this is the male split, you're going to want to bring as many male characters as possible. So uh, we've got a monk and a death knight tank, and then you've got a bunch of shaman healers, and you've got a bunch of shamans and hunters down in the, the DPS. And then you still have the warrior buff, the monk buff, the, uh, where is it? the demon hunter buff, you're going to need a warlock, you're going to need a priest, and you're going to need a mage. So we've got all that filled out, we've got it all figured out. Again, this like rogue guy up here, another example of somebody who doesn't have to be here. This person could potentially go, uh, and same with this paladin. This paladin also doesn't need to be here. Uh, they could potentially go do Mythic Plus or PvP or or even other stuff. Like maybe they need to grind Renown or maybe they need to do Torghast. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get done, especially during the first couple weeks of the race, that uh, you are limited on time, right? So if this person doesn't need to be here, then they don't have to be, right? So this this paladin, paladins don't bring any buffs or anything that's going to be particularly important in a general uh, raid fight. Obviously, there are times where um, you're going to want to have Blessing of Protection or uh, de de uh, de Devo Aura. Man, I, I had a hard time saying that. Devo Aura, stuff like that. So there are reasons you might want to bring a paladin, but in the general sense, they don't wear mail and... Uh, we've got four other healers, so you don't need this fifth healer. They can go do whatever they want. Same with this rogue. Doesn't need to be here. Same with this death knight, even. Probably doesn't need to be in this split. So that's what heroic splits uh, kind of look like. Again, depending on how many characters you have in your guild and uh, where everybody is as far as gear goes, um, as far as uh, stuff they need to get done, like maybe people have been putting off their PvP that they need to do by the end of the week. Maybe those people need to not be in some of these splits. Um, all of that stuff comes into play when you're deciding uh, who you're going to put in these splits. But that's the main reason behind them. You're going to want to get... The reason you do these uh, armor stacks is because you're going to have, let's say, uh, the last boss is going to need a lot of leather characters. Well, if you do a leather split like this, then eventually some of these characters are going to start filling in slots. Like, let's say... This healer druid loots a leather hand off the first boss. And then let's say by boss seven, they loot another leather uh, leather gloves. So they get leather gloves off boss one. Let's say they get leather gloves off boss seven. Now they can trade those to one of these other characters, right? Anyone else who wears leather in this group. Um, so you would do this first split. And then the next week, anybody who has slots that are filled can trade those pieces between all these other leather people, right? And the same goes for plate, cloth, and mail, right? So that's why you do heroic splits. Um, there's a lot of nuance to this. Obviously, if you if you can't kill a certain boss, let, let's say boss 8 is really, really hard, and rogues and druids are really, really weak uh, in a certain tier, if you can't kill this boss with this comp, you may need to swap some of these uh, druids out or some of these rogues or something and bring in classes that don't fit the, the armor type just to have the damage to kill the boss. There are other specific filters as well, like maybe you need uh, a bop, or maybe you need uh, certain immunities for, for different bosses, that kind of thing. If you need those things, then you're going to have to swap out some of these as well. You can't, you're not always going to get a leather split that's this stacked with leather, right? I mean, there are like, what, one, two, three, four, four, five characters that don't wear leather out of all 24 of these guys. Um, so... It's, you're not always going to get that nice of a split. It may be something closer to like half of them are leather, the other half are other things, or three quarters are leather, that kind of thing. But that's basically how heroic splits work. This is uh, an example of what they might look like. Uh, your mileage may vary. Some people might get more lucky. Some people might get less lucky, etc., etc. That's heroic splits. Next, let's take a look at mythic splits. Um, this is something that would be more applicable on farm. Um, so like right now between 9.1 and 9.2, uh, my guild is doing several mythic splits to try and gear up as many characters as we can 
to the maximum mythic item level at the time. So right now, the highest item level you can be is somewhere between 255 and 256, right? So uh, we're going to try and get as many characters as we can to that point, because when the next tier comes around, the heroic item level or the normal item level is going to be somewhere close to that. And if you already have uh, an item, like let's say you get a lot of Mythic Sylvanas loot, so 259 item level. If you already have 259 item level loot in certain slots, the next tier, when normal drops 252 or heroic drops 252 or whatever, uh, you can trade those pieces when they drop from normal or when they drop from heroic, right? Instead of having to wait and fill those slots with your first heroic split, they're already filled because you filled them with your mythic split from the last tier. So mythic splits are a little more complicated just because every mythic boss is going to need uh, 20, 20 characters in it instead of uh, having a range between like 25 and even down to 10. You could, you could uh, really change how many characters you bring to each heroic boss. But mythic bosses are pretty static. You have to have 20. Um, and mythic bosses are harder, right? So especially at the beginning when you're first getting into farm, you're going to have a hard time killing a lot of these bosses. Maybe they're, you're going to wipe six or seven times before you kill it. So you're going to need to bring the stronger characters, not only the ones that fit the meta, that fit your strategy, that all that, but the ones that have been lucky enough to get good gear during uh, progression and during your splits and everything. And that can throw some wrenches in here. And also, uh, certain classes may not get loot off certain bosses, right? Like uh, maybe your your need you need the Sylvanas trinket and you need the Kel'Thuzad weapon, but you don't need let's say boss number four for whatever reason. So bringing you to boss number four would be a waste of a potential uh, uh, loot, right? Because if you don't need it and you don't need to trade it to anybody, then why would you bring that class? So it it, it can be kind of difficult, mostly because you're limited on bringing exactly twenty people and you can't go below that or above that, right? So the same kind of idea is here in Mythic Splits, although you're gonna get people sitting on certain bosses just to fit that 20 number again. You're gonna need a Demon Hunter, you're gonna need a Warrior, a Monk, you're gonna need a Mage, a Warlock, and a Priest. Let's see, is that everything? Demon Hunter, Monk, Warlock, yeah, Priest, Mage, Warrior. Yeah, so it's, it's those six things. And then also you could potentially like if you have a warrior, we've got two warriors here, DPS 1 and DPS 5 are both playing warrior. Maybe we bring this shaman for their wind fury totem, or maybe we bring them for uh, their wind rush totem or, or stuff like that, right? Maybe we have to have a death knight in for boss 5 in particular because it's soul render. We need a grip in adds or something like that. So this death knight is in for boss 5, but we don't need them for boss 4 because that's, uh, let's say, remnant, for example. And Death Knights don't do anything particularly special on, on boss 4, whereas uh, having a monk in there would be really good, or having a hunter in there might be uh, super nice. So maybe we, we, we replace this Death Knight with a hunter for this, this specific boss, right? Um, so this is what a split could potentially look like. And then for a second split, it's going to come down to... The number of splits you do is going to come down to how many geared characters you have and how easy is it for you guys to kill bosses on those characters, right? So whether that's how strong, how good are you at playing those characters or how strong are those characters in certain encounters, right? Um, so for this second split, this is going to be, if we go back to the uh, character info tab, I took all of the character ones and all of the character twos and I split them between these two splits because those are the most likely to be the strongest characters, right? So in split two, we need to make sure um, that every boss has a warlock, every boss has a demon hunter, every boss has a monk, warrior, priest, mage, all that stuff. And then outside of that, as long as you can kill the boss, it doesn't really matter what you bring. Um, just as long as it's you know it's strong enough to kill the boss, and they're they're classes and and characters that need gear, right? What you could potentially get into is let's say you've been doing splits for a long time. It's been, you know, three or four months into farm now, and you get to the point where some of your characters are hitting best in slot, right? So for example, my my main priest has every piece from the raid that I would ever want. I don't I have zero upgrades left from the raid. 
When this starts to happen, what you could potentially do is instead of bringing a character for their chance at loot, you can bring a character to carry other characters through a, a split, right? So for example, maybe we would add a split three over here and I would move my priest out of split one and put in a third character of mine. Let's say it's a, a warlock, for example. I might put my, oops, I might put my warlock in split one and take my priest out of split one. So I'd let my warlock get carried in split one a little bit because it's not gonna do very much damage and it's gonna be pretty weak and I'm pretty bad at it, let's say. And I'll take my really strong Giga Chad character and I'll go put it in split three so it can help carry all the rat characters that are gonna be coming into split three, right? So there's a bit of strategy involved when it comes to uh, mythic splits, same with heroic splits. Um, and mythic splits are what you're going to be doing most of the time in a guild like this uh, because you're going to do progression for a week, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. And then after that, it's going to be farmed for however many months, right? And so uh, mythic splits is going to be what you're doing most of the time. And then during the progression weeks, heroic week, that kind of thing, when the patch first drops, heroic splits are going to be going like crazy. But you're also going to be spending a lot more time playing the game during progression than you are during farm. So that's that's kind of how splits work, um, what they might look like. You'd have spreadsheets like this that have everybody's character names. Instead of just saying warrior, rogue, shaman, that kind of thing, this would say like uh, whatever your tank's name is, and then his what his character's name is here, his demon hunter, and then what his warrior's character name is. And then you'd go in and you'd be like, okay, we need to make split one. So everybody whisper my demon hunter invite and we'll we'll get together and do split one, that kind of thing. So basically uh, that's how splits work. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you still have questions or anything, also feel free to leave a comment. If you liked the video, make sure you click the like button. If you really liked it, feel free to subscribe or share it with your friends or whatever. Um, and then you can check the description for a link to my Discord server if you wanna come hang out with me, come hang out with other people who enjoy watching these kinds of videos. So that's going to be it for me. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.